Hi everyone and welcome to this Fantasy Art Friday video. This week I want to try and draw a lava giant. Uh, I recently loved working on an ice giant drawing. Uh, not only thinking about the design of the giant, but also about the environment around it and trying to create a bit more of a story. Uh, so in this case I wanted to add another little character in the corner and uh, trying to get a great, create a sense of scale. And also I wanted to try and add a volcano in the background. And I was looking forward to trying to create some smoke effects and I had something in mind that I wanted to try that was very different from my usual style. And as you can see, I started by working on the initial sketch with my mechanical pencil and then moved on to using a Copic Multiliner SP 0.03mm to add the pen outlines. And in terms of the design of this giant, I wanted it to have sharpened volcanic rock around its face. And in between all the rock, I wanted to have some, some cracks so that w when it came to colouring, I could add some bright red in between to create the effect that the lava is flowing through all of the rocks of this giant. Um, I added a huge hole at the top of the giant's head to act as a furnace to show where the heat is being vented upwards and out of the top of the giant's head. I thought this would be really fun to attempt colouring um, and I was looking forward to that. Uh, in terms of the rest of the giant's body, I, um, I added a bunch of sharpened volcanic rocks and just try to add more areas where I could try to create the effects that lava is flowing through. In the background I added that volcano and then in the foreground I added a cliffside with a little character standing in the bottom. And I find this to be a great way to add a sense of scale to this giant and just to show how massive it is. And uh, I also decided to have the giant holding a massive tree um, as another great way to add a sense of scale. Once I was happy with the outlines and the layout of the drawing, it was time to add the colouring. And for the colouring of this drawing I used Copic markers, starting off by working on the giant's head. And I, I started with cool grey markers ranging between 1, 3, 5 and 7. Starting off with the lighter shades first to just add a base layer and then I added more shading around the right side of the giant's face. Um, also adding lots of shading underneath its eyebrows um, and just underneath areas where, where it would help to add more depth. Um, also in those areas to help make those areas stand out amongst all the dark shading, I was using my white Prismacolor pencil just to make sure I defined all the shapes. While I was working on all of the rocks around the giant's head and placing all of that dark shading, I started placing some cadmium red between all the cracks and used a, a honey marker over the top of it to try and create a glowing effect. And I was really pleased with this. I found that the bright colouring really contrasted the neutral tones of the rocks and uh, especially worked well in the, the darker shaded areas. I used the honey marker again to add the glowing inside the giant's mouth and also used the honey marker for the eyes as well, um, adding a little bit of cadmium red around the outer edges. And then to add the bright highlights to the eyes, I used a Uniball Signo Broad white ink pen. And then it was time to work on the furnace. I coloured this in with the honey marker to match the mouth and just to show that it's just glowing hot inside the giant's head. I was really pleased with this and I, I loved the contrast of these bright colours and the, the dark tones with the, the cool greys. Um, after this, uh, to add some extra effects to all of the rock texturing, um, I used the Uniball highlighter pen, uh, not just as a way of adding highlights, but to add kind of a, a scratchy texture to the surface of the rocks. Moving on from the giant's head, I continued the same colouring technique for its neck, shoulder and chest with the cool grey markers 3, 5 and 7, and then adding highlights with the white Prismacolor pencil and the Uniball highlighter pen. But it was in this area that I found it extremely helpful to make use of the black marker to add that extra depth and to help show where each of the layers of rocks are overlapping each other. And it just, it just really helps to define all of the different areas. And then I also made sure to add more of that glowing effect around the giant's chest with the honey marker. For the rock armour plating around the front of the giant's body, I added some lighter greys around the front for the highlighted side, and then underneath them I was adding a bunch of dark shading with the black marker and the cool grey 7 and 5, to show where the different layers of the armour are, are overlapping, um, and also made sure to add the usual highlights with the highlighter pen. Then it was time to colour in more areas with lava flowing through, uh, that being the back of the giant's body and its arms. So to create this effect, I started by working on the rocks first, using a black and cool grey 7 markers, and then to colour in between I used a cadmium red. 
Um, after that, I then added highlights with the white Prismacolor pencil and the Uniball highlighter pen, and then added some extra shading over the top of everything with a mixture of a cool, the black marker and the cool grey 7 and 5. Uh, I found that adding this extra layer of shading really helped to d define the, the actual shape of the, the arms especially, and it kind of gave this cool glowing effect to the lava at the centre. For the colouring of the tree that the giant's holding, I used a mixture of champagne and maroon markers for the trunk, and then I used a bush marker to add the green colouring. And then over the top of everything to add some highlights, I used the highlighter pen. Uh, and then after that, it was time to work on the environment and the background, and I was looking forward to attempting something a bit different this time. So I started off by working on the sky. I used a cool grey 5 for this, making it very cloudy and gloomy. And then for the volcano in front of that, I added some dark shading towards the top with a cool grey 7, and then blended downwards with cool grey 5 and 3. Then over the top of that, I added some vibrant colours with cadmium red, chrome orange, apricot and honey and then also made use of some Prismacolor pencils, those being Poppy Red, Pale Vermilion, and Spanish Orange. Just trying to create the effect that the volcano is erupting and there's some really vibrant colors going on there. Uh, after that, I wanted to create the cloud of smoke spewing from the top of the volcano, and this is where I tried something completely different from my usual Copic marker drawings, and I used a 6B pencil adding some extremely dark shading and just trying to create layers of smoke, also using a blending stick over the top of it, and then also using a small eraser to add some highlights along the left edge. Um, it was, it's a super fun process and I just really wanted to see how well it would blend with the Copic markers. I used Cool Grey 1, 3 and 5 to help fade the giant towards the bottom part of the drawing, and then I used the same smoke process in front of the giant to help separate it from the foreground. Uh, with the 6B pencil and then I kind of blended the effect upwards as well with the blending stick uh, upwards towards the volcano. For the foreground I used the same rock colouring technique as I did for the giant with the cool grey markers and then I used a crimson marker to add some bright colouring to the little character's cape uh, and also made sure to add some bright highlights with the highlighter pen uh, to add the rock texturing and to make that little character stand out. Uh, after that I then added some environment effects with making use of the Prismacolor pencils and the highlighter pen uh, and also used the highlighter pen to add some extra highlights around the giant. And after that this drawing was completed. Overall it took about seven hours to complete and I found it so much fun to work on uh, purely because I tried stuff that was a bit different in this one. Uh, putting more effort into the environment and adding that smoke with the 6B pencil. So please let me know what you think of this drawing in the comments below, and if you have any suggestions for future fantasy art, fan art, or tutorials, any suggestions at all are hugely appreciated. If you want to see more drawings like this, then make sure you subscribe, and any likes or shares on this video, they really mean a lot to me. If you want to follow my progress and keep updated with everything I work on through the week, then be sure to check out the links in the description box below to check out my Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And once again, thank you so much for the support, and thank you so much for watching this video. It means so much to me, and I love working on drawings like this. I hope you're having an awesome day, and I'll see you all soon.